from Drop Biscuit Studios and the people who brought you Wondery's Inside Jaws, Inside the Exorcist, and Inside Psycho comes You Talking to Me? Bite sized Hollywood history with plenty of bite. The Rotten, Putrid Texas Chainsaw Massacre. This is You Talking to Me? I'm Mark Ramsey. It's been almost 50 years since a van of naive kids ventured down the dusty roads of rural Texas, stumbled across a seemingly deserted house, and found themselves smack dab in the middle of a massacre. The Texas Chainsaw Massacre, that is. 50 years and almost as many sequels, remakes, and reboots. But through it all, the creepy, unsettling original has yet to be equaled. It still can make your skin crawl. And if you talk to the folks who made the movie, they'll tell you why. It's because the noxious grit and stomach-turning torture wasn't just up there on the screen, oh no. It was also on set, between every frame of film. First off, Leatherface himself, Gunnar Hansen. The six foot four, 300 pound, one-time bouncer who wielded the titular chainsaw and covered his face in the shredded skin of others, he landed the role of a lifetime on a lucky break The original actor got drunk and locked himself in his motel room. The audition went something like this. Are you a violent person, Gunner? No, he replied. Are you crazy? No, he replied. Can you do this role? Sure, he said. It's easy. Well, those were the right answers. It didn't take long for Leatherface to smell like crap. See, he was ordered not to change his costume at all. During the entire shoot, in the broiling 100 degree plus Texas sun, running around chasing 20 somethings, 12 hours a day, four weeks. I was the smelliest element of the set, Hanson once said, and the set was plenty smelly. There's a scene at dinner with Leatherface and his kin on the table, head cheese, a kind of meat jelly made with the flesh from the head of a calf or a pig. It was rotting in the oppressive heat of the room. The windows were blocked out by black tar paper, which only made the boiling hot room hotter. The stench was so sickening, cast and crew heaved and dashed outside for fresh air between takes. In fact, the sets were strewn with dead animals. To keep them from decomposing too rapidly, the makeup artist injected them with formaldehyde. Once she missed and stabbed herself with the syringe, almost embalming her own leg. Poor Marilyn Burns, the final girl, strapped to a chair, screaming for hours and hours, day after day. Grandpa, the corpse-like family patriarch, had to suck blood from her finger. But the prop knife wouldn't work, so Gunnar Hansen sliced her finger for real. Grandpa was sucking authentic blood and never knew it. It just got crazier and crazier and crazier, one of the actors later said. The smells were loathsome and repulsive, the fatigue overwhelming, the heat exhausting, and you had these delirious actors in the wee hours debating the best way to hit poor Marilyn Burns over the head with a hammer. But in that repulsive setting may have been the secret to the film's legendary success. That meat was old, it was rotten, it was putrid, it was terrible, said the cinematographer Daniel Pearl. But I believe that the dire circumstances added to the film. If we'd been comfy, If everybody had their own trailer, I'm not so sure you'd feel the horror in quite the way you do. None of us were happy. We were miserable. The idea for the movie popped into director Toby Hooper's head one day when he was out shopping at Christmas of all holidays. There he was in the hardware section of a crowded department store and on sale, chainsaws. What would it be like, he fantasized, if I could carve my way through the throngs of holiday shoppers. The outlines of the story, he says, came to him in about 30 seconds. Hippie kids lost deep in the heart of Texas. They stumble across a strange house, which happens to be home base for some cannibal lunatics. Cue the chainsaw. Everyone involved in the movie hated the title, The Texas Chainsaw Massacre. Everyone except Toby Hooper. That title, he believed, says it all. And oh, does it ever. Follow us on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, wherever you're listening right now, and watch out for chainsaws. That's you talking to me. I'm Mark Ramsey.